So in this video, we're going to have a look at the formal definition of what it means for a sequence to have a limit plus infinity or minus infinity. Indeed, we're going to define what that means. So let's start with an example. No, not like that, with the pen. So we're going to start with the simplest example, which is we'll consider the sequence an, which is defined as n. So the sequence is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc., getting indefinitely big. So this is a very simple sequence. At the moment, if you're following along either in Real Analysis Playlist or Calculus Playlist, we have looked at the epsilon definition of the limit of a sequence, and this does not meet the criteria to have a limit. There is no number within the real line that this sequence gets to and stays indefinitely close to. We're now going to extend that concept to cover sequences that tend to plus infinity or tend to negative infinity. And this sequence, intuitively, it does tend to plus infinity. Indeed, you can say that this sequence, or by the end of this video, you'll be able to say that this sequence has limit plus infinity, that it tends to plus infinity. You can even say that it converges to plus infinity, although take that with a pinch of salt because the meaning of converging to plus infinity is different to the meaning of converging to a limit that is actually within the real numbers, which we've defined through the epsilon definition of the limit. Some people will actually use the term diverges to infinity or diverges to negative infinity because we're going to also have the idea of diverging off to negative infinity or tending to negative infinity. So all of those terms, they all capture this same idea that we're going to extend our concept of limit from what we've defined so far to include these sequences that either go off indefinitely in the positive direction or go off indefinitely in the negative direction. So this is a sequence then that we would like to say tends to plus infinity. We would like to be able to say that its limit is plus infinity. Obviously, if we make the negative example, so a n is equal to negative n, which will be the sequence minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, that's the mirror image. That's going off in the leftward direction, going off towards negative infinity, and we would equally like to be able to say that that tends to negative infinity, that its limit is negative infinity, or that it converges to negative infinity, or that it diverges off to negative infinity. And what we're trying to contrast these nice sequences to is a sequence like, for instance, this. So this is a really badly behaved sequence that isn't going to get the privilege of, being, of what we're about to define. So here, negative 1 to the power of n times n. So that is the sequence that's going to flit between negative and positive terms. That's what this minus 1 to the power of n has the effect of doing. So the first term is going to be minus 1. The second term is going to be 2. The third term is going to be negative 3. The fourth term is going to be 4. Then negative 5, 6. You can see it's flitting between the negative and positive numbers. And in both directions, it's going off, you know. Uh, these even terms are going to get indefinitely big. They're going off indefinitely in the right direction. And I feel like I do need a picture of the real line here. So here's the real line. So this sequence looks like this. Here's minus 1, then we've got 2, then we've got minus 3, then 4. So the even terms are going to go off in this direction indefinitely, and the odd terms are going to go off in this direction indefinitely. Now, this is a very badly behaved sequence. This, we do not want to say that this thing tends to plus infinity or tends to negative infinity. Indeed, it's doing both of them. You know, one subsequence is tending off to plus infinity and one subsequence is tending off to negative infinity. So this is a not a nice sequence at all, a very naughty sequence. Whereas these ones are much better behaved and therefore these ones are going to get this privilege of now having a limit when we extend our definition of limit to include these concepts of infinite limits, whereas this one is going to remain not having a limit. This is going to remain just a non-convergent sequence. So that's what we're doing in this video. That's the spirit of this video. We're going to extend our notion of limit to include the concept of tending off to either plus infinity or negative infinity so that these nice sequences that are tending off in one direction can now have a limit to contrast them to these naughty sequences that are not tending off in one direction.
So how are we going to do this then? So we'll start with defining what it means for a sequence to tend off to plus infinity, to have limit plus infinity. So limit as n approaches infinity of a of n is equal to plus infinity. So a nice new symbol. And we're not adding this into the real line. We're just defining what this means. What if I write this? What does it actually mean? If I put this symbol here, what does this mean? And I'm going to now define what that means. So think about how we defined the epsilon definition of a limit. We were saying the terms of the sequence need to get to and stay indefinitely close to our limit. And that's important, not just get to, but also stay. That staying part is very, very important. And that's going to come across into this definition that we're about to write here, because we do not want to just make it that the terms of the sequence need to get indefinitely big. We want to make it that they need to get and stay indefinitely big. And the crucial way of seeing that is that if we just made it that they need to get indefinitely big, then this one would satisfy that property, because you know, the all even terms here are going to get indefinitely big. So you give me any point in the positive real line here, I will be able to find you a term in this sequence that is beyond that. So it would satisfy that definition if we just made it that the t points of the sequence or the terms of the sequence need to get indefinitely big. No, we need to make it that they need to get and stay indefinitely big. And of course, that is where this sequence is going to fail because you know, for any even term, you might have a massive great even term, like one million maybe. The next one along is then going to be a negative number, so it's going to be flipped back along the other way. So it's not going to be the case that this sequence is ever going to stay indefinitely big because it's continuously flitting between the indefinitely big and then the indefinitely negative. So let's write this down formally then. So for all, for all, Bignesses is what we now want. Remember, in the epsilon definition, we had for all smallnesses, epsilon. So now we're going to make it for all x is a positive real number. So for all x greater than zero, there must exist a big N is an element of the natural numbers such that for all little n is greater than or equal to big N, the terms of the sequence are bigger than x. So a n is greater than x. So let's think about what that means. So we'll just, ooh, we'll have another picture of the real line here. So here's our real line. Here is zero. Here is x. So x can be any real number you like that is positive. I mean, you could actually get rid of the positive and just have it as real numbers, but I think it's more intuitive just to stick with the positive real numbers. So we'll take x here, a positive real number, and it could be enormous, you know, this could be 20 billion, it could be huge for every single one of them, no matter how big it is, I need to be able to find you a term in the sequence, so let's write out our sequence here, so a1, a2, and then I need to be able to find a term, this big nth term, such that if you look at any term that is beyond that, so any a little n, so for all little n are greater than or equal to it, so this entire tail end of the sequence, they have to be bigger than x, so they have to be over here. And of course, for a given x, you know, if it's 20 billion, you will have to go a long way along in this sequence potentially. Like if you take our original example of the sequence 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, you're going to have to go very, very far along in the sequence to get beyond 20 billion. So what big N you need will depend on your X. And if you go even bigger, you know, if you make it 20 billion billion, you're going to have to need an even bigger N. The important thing is here that given any X, you can find a big N. For each one, there must exist a big N such that for that nth term and all terms beyond it, they are now bigger than that x. And that is capturing this notion that however big you get, the terms of the sequence get that big and stay that big. So it's capturing this notion of the terms of the sequence getting to and staying indefinitely big. So let's now just look at this in the context of our examples up here. So this one is going to meet this criterion. So you give me any x, I will be able to find you a big N. This is turning into just the Archimedean property. 
give me any real number x that is positive, I then just need to find you a term in this sequence, but that's easy because the terms of the sequence are just the index, you know, they're just their position in the sequence. So I just need to find you a big N, therefore, such that it's bigger than that number. But that's the Archimedean property that you can do that, that there's always a natural number that is bigger than any real number. The natural numbers are not bounded above. And of course, if you then take any other little natural number, little n, that is bigger than that big n, it's also going to be bigger than x. So all the natural numbers beyond it, all which correspond to all the terms of the sequence beyond it, are also going to be bigger than that x. So it's true, therefore, that given any x, I will be able to find, if I go far enough along in this sequence, then the tail end of that sequence will be bigger than x. So it's satisfying this criterion. So yes, we can now write that the limit of this sequence as n approaches infinity is indeed plus infinity. Meanwhile, just to stress again that this horrible naughty sequence is not going to meet this criteria, because even though the even terms of the sequence do get indefinitely big, they're not, you're never going to be able to find a tail end of this sequence that are all beyond that x. So you give me any x, and it could be an enormous great number, like 20 million, let's say, I will be able to find a point, an even term in this sequence, where the even terms are beyond that, but then just go to the next term along, which will be an odd term, that will now be back over in the negative side of the numbers, so it won't be bigger than x. And that's going to hold true no matter how far along you go in the sequence, no matter how big an even term you go, its next term along is always going to be a negative one. So it's never going to be the case that you're ever going to find a tail end of the sequence that is all bigger than x. So it doesn't meet this criterion. So you cannot write that that thing's limit is plus infinity. So that's good. We don't want to be able to write that this thing has a limit plus infinity. So let's now do the mirror image for a sequence tending to negative infinity. So hopefully you should be able to write this down for yourself. So limit as n approaches infinity of a n is equal to minus infinity. We are defining that to mean that for all, and this time it's going to be for all real numbers that are less than zero, there must exist a big N is an element of the natural numbers such that for all little n is greater than or equal to big N, the terms of the sequence are now less than that x. So what this is saying is that here now is zero, here is x, you give me any negative number, I must be able to find you a term in the sequence such that it and all the little terms beyond it are less than that x, i.e. are over here on this picture. And this is then capturing the notion that we want the terms of the sequence to get to and stay indefinitely negative, indefinitely small. And hopefully you agree with me that if we look at our middle example up here, that it is going to meet that criterion to be able to say that it's tending to negative infinity or that its limit is negative infinity. Because if you give me any negative number x, I am going to be able to go along in this sequence and I will be able to find you a term in that sequence which is smaller than that x. That's the mirror image of the Archimedean property that the negative versions of the natural numbers are not going to be bounded below by any real number, that if you give me any negative real number, I must be able to find you a negative version of one of the natural numbers that is smaller than it. So eventually, if I go along here, I will be able to find one that is smaller than your x. And then, of course, all the subsequent ones are even smaller, so they'll also be smaller than x. So that entire tail end of this sequence is then smaller than x. And you can do that for any x, and therefore it is true that it gets and stays indefinitely negative or indefinitely small. So to finish, I'd just like to summarise what we've done in this video. We have extended our notion of the limit of a sequence so that it includes this concept of a sequence tending to plus infinity or minus infinity. And we have formally defined what that means here. Note that this definition is different to the epsilon definition 
for convergence to a real number. Plus infinity and minus infinity are not real numbers. So do not look at these statements and try to apply the epsilon definition to them. These are the definitions that apply when you see these statements. It is a separate definition to the epsilon definition for convergence to a real number. Also, do not try and apply results that we have proven for the epsilon definition of the limit of a sequence to a real number, such as, for instance, the algebra of limit results. Do not try and apply them to these definitions. Those results have been proven from the epsilon definition of the limit. Again, be warned, this is a separate definition and those results are not proven for this and are not going to apply here. I have one final additional warning that I'd like to give you about this before we finish. And that is that what we have just defined is in some contexts helpful. And that's the reason we bothered to cover it. So in certain future videos in my playlist on real analysis, we will use this concept of sequences tending to plus infinity or tending to negative infinity. However, in many other contexts, this definition that we've just made doesn't help at all. It adds nothing. And therefore, in some videos that you will see in the future, I will ignore these definitions and I will just refer to these sequences up here as non-convergent sequences. I'll say they don't have a limit. And you, that's very common. You'll see me do that. And you'll see other people do it as well. So Yes, these definitions exist, but there are certain situations where they are helpful and other situations where they don't add anything. And in those situations where they don't add anything, we will still just refer to these sequences as non-convergent. So that's the final warning then, that you will still hear me talk about the fact that these sequences are non-convergent, even though we've defined this way of looking at them as though they do have a limit of plus infinity. But we'll only use that definition in circumstances where it is helpful. So we'll end there. Thank you for watching.